North Korea launching another ICBM. North Korea's latest missile test is raising new concerns that they could hit deep into the mainland U.S. The president faces another immediate challenge in the Pacific. North Korea launched another sophisticated missile today. One analyst say it's capable of reaching the U.S. mainland. South Korea's top diplomat quickly got on the phone with her U.S. and Japanese counterparts to discuss stronger measures on North Korea following its missile launch. China, the regime's traditional ally, has also voiced its opposition to Pyongyang's latest provocation. Mark Broom has more. South Korea's Foreign Minister Kang Kyung-hwa held separate emergency phone talks with her U.S. and Japanese counterparts on Saturday, where all three condemned North Korea's ballistic missile launch and exchanged ideas on strong response measures, including U.N. sanctions. Minister Kang, U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and Japanese Foreign Minister Fumio Kishida assessed the launch as a grave violation of U.N. resolutions and agreed that the suspected ICBM fired on Friday was an advanced version of the missile launched earlier this month. There were divided assessments on the ballistic missile launched on July 4th, but North Korea claimed it as a successful ICBM test. Kang also expressed her disappointment that North Korea had let down the international community and rebuffed Seoul's efforts to resume inter-Korean humanitarian exchanges. However, she reiterated that South Korea will continue to call on North Korea to refrain from provocations and accept Seoul's proposals. In a separate statement, Tillerson said the U.S. will never accept a nuclear-armed North Korea and called on China and Russia, the principal economic enablers of North Korea's nuclear weapon and ballistic missile development program, to take more action to curb the regime's nuclear ambitions. With North Korea repeatedly defying the international community's calls to refrain from further provocations, China also expressed its opposition. In response to North Korea again firing an intercontinental ballistic missile, China's foreign ministry spokesman stated that China opposes North Korea going against the UN resolutions and the common desire of the international community by carrying out launches. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres also slammed the North for its launch of what he called another ballistic missile of possible intercontinental range. While a date has not been set for an emergency UN Security Council meeting, it's expected to be convened as early as next week. On Friday, the North launched its second intercontinental ballistic missile this month. It flew for more than 40 minutes, traveling high into space before coming down in the Sea of Japan. Carter Evans says officials in Hawaii are not taking chances. <laughs> The latest missile launch drew praise from North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, who said through state media the test clearly proved the whole U.S. mainland is in firing range. Japanese news cameras purportedly captured the missile crashing into the ocean, but experts confirm if it were aimed at a lower trajectory, it could have reached Los Angeles, Chicago, and even New York. In response, U.S. and South Korean forces staged joint live-fire exercises, and Secretary of State Rex Tillerson condemned the launch, saying, we will never accept a nuclear-armed North Korea. Puts U.S. cities like Denver and Chicago firmly in their crosshairs, and their continued testing comes despite a lot of tough talk from the president, among others. The rare late-night launch shot a ballistic missile into space. It remained airborne for more than 40 minutes, flying 1,000 kilometers due east before splashing into the Sea of Japan. This was the second successful intercontinental ballistic missile test within the past month, and it flew longer and farther than any previous missile. Pentagon intelligence analysts have been surprised by the fast technological advances made by North Korea's weapons scientists. Recent North Korean propaganda videos have featured the U.S. capital in flames. Analysts do believe that the missile launched today did have the range to hit Los Angeles, Chicago, or even New York.
It is unclear how close North Korea is to being able to arm a missile with a nuclear warhead. So they've been saying it for a long time. I think the difference is we're coming to believe them. Arms control expert Jeffrey Lewis. We're in a relationship where we can destroy them and they can destroy us and we may not like it, but that's where we are. The Pentagon said the launch did not pose an immediate threat to the U.S., but the missile came very close to U.S. ally Japan. Prime Minister Abe called it a serious and real threat. U.S. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs General Joseph Dunford discussed military responses with his South Korean counterpart. In a show of force, the U.S. and South Korean military staged a joint missile exercise in direct response to North Korea. This, as Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, is still trying to free three Americans held captive there. Joining us now, Blaze Mishtal, Director of National Security at the Bipartisan Policy Center. Uh, Blaze, bipartisan indeed. Everybody's worried about North Korea. But every time they have one of these launches, uh, we have folks like you on, uh, as esteemed as you are, and they say we need to do this, we need to do that, we could do this, we could do that. And then the administration seems to do none of it. Is it just it seems to do none of it, or is it actually doing something different than the previous administrations? I think at this point it's a combination. We've definitely seen uh, President Trump try to take a different tack. Uh, pressuring China first and foremost rather than engaging with, with North Korea directly. Uh, but I think you have seen a bipartisan record of failure on North Korea because the risks of action uh, seem so great and seem so imminent compared to if we can push this back a couple years, the risks of inaction, well, my, pre my, my successor has to take care of that. Well, I exactly to that point. And it seems as though we're seeing the risks of inaction. They have a nuclear weapon. There was a first strike capability a couple, a couple of decades now that could have prevented it. Now they have an ICBM. There was a way to prevent that as well. Video of Kim Jong-un as he's uh, been celebrating a lot. And they, they, the North Koreans don't seem to be shying away. They're, they continue to step up the pressure. China is now conducting live fire drills right near the Korean Peninsula. The South China Morning Post, who normally has a good uh, barometer of these things, put up this picture of uh, Chinese military drills. That wouldn't have come out if the Chinese military didn't want it to come out, number one. Clearly, the Chinese military is trying to send a message. Who are they trying to send a message to? I think they're trying to message both North Korea and the United States. Look, China fears two things, right? It fears chaos on the Korean Peninsula that would lead to refugees coming in, but it also fears any possibility of regime change in Pyongyang. So at the same time, it's trying to tell Kim Jong-un, don't do anything crazy, and it's trying to tell Washington, don't do anything crazy. Can it have it both ways? It's hard to see how it can do that much longer. Uh, you know, Secretary Tillerson said today the United States cannot accept a nuclear-armed uh, mm -hmm. North Korea. We've been accepting it for 10 years. Uh, are we going to start doing something different now that President Trump said that... Do you get a sense that there is a red line somewhere? The North Koreans haven't yeah. conducted a nuclear test in a while. They keep testing the ICBMs, but no nuclear tests. Have they perhaps been given a behind-the-scenes red line? Any reporting on that? Well... It's not clear. We had President Trump say it's not going to happen as it relates to North Korea getting an ICBM. So it seems if there is a public red line, it would have been at the test they just did today. I think the reason you haven't seen nuclear testing is because they have nuclear weapons. They know they can make it work. The next step for them is miniaturization, trying to get the bomb to fit on top of an ICBM. That's a little harder. That takes a little more time. I think the next test we see will mean that they both have the missile and the bomb to put on top of it that can reach the U.S. How do they do that? I mean, obviously, you don't launch a new, maybe they would, but uh, that may irritate even China if they launched a missile with a nuclear warhead on top and it went boom over uh, the Pacific somewhere. So how do they prove that? What's, what's the next thing we should look for before they actually launch something like that? Well, I, I think the next thing, which might be you know, already a step too late, is their next nuclear test. And we can tell through seismic testing more or less what sort of weapon was detonated. Can we detonated. tell if they've miniaturized it? By the, by the size of it, we, we should have some, some, mm. some, some knowledge of what type of weapon it was, how big it was. Uh, and I think that if we can you know, have the intelligence that says this seems like it was a miniaturized weapon that was just tested, is going to tell us that, that they have the capability with, we've been fearing them getting. Yeah, you have to wonder if then perhaps the administration would act, even, even in some of these things that are from between where we are now and uh, a preemptive U.S. strike, which it seems as though there's a big distance there. Blaze, appreciate your insights. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me on, Lauren. North Korea's missile test earlier this month put the Hawaiian Islands in range. 
Because of our proximity, we are 20 minutes away from destruction. State Representative Gene Ward wants to reopen military bunkers hidden deep inside Diamond Head to temporarily run Hawaii's government amid a nuclear attack. The tunnels were built more than 100 years ago for ammunition storage, says Lieutenant Colonel Charles Anthony with the National Guard. So this was never designed to house a lot of people for any period of time? No, it was designed to withstand an artillery barrage and also to unleash an artillery barrage in the opposite direction. So far, Hawaii is the first state to issue an official emergency plan for a North Korean launch. Remembering the last attack here, no one wants to be caught off guard. We had no preparation for Pearl Harbor. This one, we've had a slow burn. If we are sleeping now, when we have a clear and present danger, we are negligent. North Korea's leader says the missile was capable of carrying a large-sized nuclear warhead. Elaine, the U.S. has requested an emergency meeting of the U.N. Security Council on Monday. Beijing's foreign ministry spokesman King Shang said China is opposed to North Korea's continuous violations of U.N. Security Council resolutions. China opposes North Korea's violation of these resolutions with the launches, and we urge North Korea not to resort to actions that violate these resolutions and return to talks to create the necessary conditions for peace. Meanwhile, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's response conveyed frustration with the regime and its dangerous actions. North Korea has once again fired a ballistic missile. They ignore the repeated warnings from the international community. This missile launch clearly shows that North Korea's threat has increased. The Prime Minister added that Japan will closely cooperate with South Korea and the U.S. to put more pressure on Pyongyang. Together we are facing the threat of the reckless and brutal regime in North Korea. The nuclear and ballistic missile programs of that regime require a determined response. The North Korean dictatorship has no regard for the safety and security of its people or its neighbors and has no respect for human life, and that's been proven over and over again. Millions of North Korea's own citizens have suffered and starved to death, and the entire world just witnessed what the regime did to our wonderful Otto Warmbier. I thank President Moon for expressing his condolences on the travesty of Otto's death. Our thoughts and our prayers remain with this wonderful family. The era of strategic patience with the North Korean regime has failed. Many years, and it's failed. And frankly, that patience is over. We are working closely with South Korea and Japan, as well as partners around the world, on a range of diplomatic, security, and economic measures to protect our allies and our own citizens from this menace known as North Korea. The United States calls on other regional powers and all responsible nations to join us in implementing sanctions and demanding that the North Korean regime choose a better path and do it quickly, and a different future for its long-suffering people. 